rehearsals for the Children's Christmas Eve service begin this afternoon. Children in 4th through 8th grades will meet in the Worship Center from 1 to 3 p.m. Please contact Arlita Harmon if you have any questions. Be sure and stop by the Angel Tree in the Gathering Place. The Angel Tree is covered with tags that you can take with you to purchase gifts for members of Risen Savior and the community this Christmas. Contact Lori Casey for more info. Here are all the Connect groups that meet this week. See page two of the Gray Pages for more details and for who to contact with questions. Our Wednesday evening Advent schedule continues this Wednesday. We begin with Soup and More, sponsored by the senior youth and their parents from 5.30 to 6.15. Parents, please remember that you are responsible for your children until 6.30. If your children are playing in the gym, you need to be there to supervise them. Wednesday evening ministries are from 6.30 to 7.05, and we'll all gather for worship in the Worship Center after that from 7.15 to 7.45. The Holiday Shopping Expo will be held from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday, December 14th in the Multipurpose Room. Everyone is invited to stop by for some Christmas shopping. Cooking with Nuts is this Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m. in the kitchen. Please see page 3 of the Great Pages for all the ingredients you'll need to bring and talk to Maggie Newton for more info. Our annual trip to local care homes to go Christmas caroling is this Saturday at 4 p.m. This is a wonderful family ministry. Please sign up at the sign-up sheet table or at the table in the gathering place so we can get an accurate count for transportation. See page 3 of the Great Pages for more details. Announcement and calendar information are due soon. Please get your Connect Group dates and schedule to the church office by next Sunday. Also next Sunday, there will be a rehearsal for the Children's Christmas Eve service from 1 to 3 p.m. for those in grades K through 8. Please see Arlita Harmon if you have any questions. There are only 17 days left until Christmas, and we've got a lot going on. Be sure and visit risensavior.net and click News and Events. And as always, read those gray pages for all the ways that you can get involved and help share the love of Christ.
take his all For my friends you see There will be a day when we'll be counted And those are the headlines this evening. What a depressing society we live in, Jana. And speaking of depressing, let's shoot it over to Shane Bolt for this week's Christmas forecast. Thanks, Jana. It does seem like there's a high pressure system coming our way, as we see right here on the map. Speaking of high pressure, Mitch, I never got a response to see if you're going to be joining me for church this Christmas. What is happening? Looks like Shane just invited Rick to church. Hey, guys, you're live. Um, uh, so, Christmas forecast um, looks like... <laughs> uh, how about it, Shane? Is there any snow in the forecast? The weather calls for a silent night, but a holy night. There is a heavenly peace coming in from the north. It just begs the question, Mitch. You want to come to church with me? Back to you. I will, I will have to speak to my wife when we're not on live TV. <laughs> Should we go to commercial? All right, but you better make up your mind because church service fills up quick. What do you say? Come on, come to church with me. Back to you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Breaking news. Seems like Mitch just left baby Jesus out in the cold. Good morning. It's time to get ready. That's what Advent's all about. So today as we get ready, not just to go to a Christmas service, but to let the joy of the season be all of our lives, let's rise as we worship Him. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Therefore, encourage one another. Build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them, and you listen to their cry. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God the Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. We come to prepare the way. The, way the, way the hope of Christ, the peace of Christ, to enter our world, to enter our hearts. We cry out to gather in the wilderness. The kingdom of heaven has come near. We come to be part of the light. The light shines in the darkness. Welcome and encourage one another, for Christ welcomes and encourages us. For the glory of God. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to me. 
Let's pray. Send your Holy Spirit to increase faith within us, Heavenly Father, so that we base our hope on what you have done for us rather than on the empty promises of this fallen world. Bring us peace and heart in this time together. Bless us by your word. Lift up our hearts as we await the coming of Jesus Christ. May this time together encourage us to live lives that glorify you. Amen.
forevermore and evermore. That means it's been going on and it's going to keep going on. In our first reading for today, that's what Isaiah is going to lay out to us, what God would really like to have, not just then, but now, from Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness with a sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf, and their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. In that day. Realize that's the day we live in. Wouldn't it be nice if instead of looking at things with our own eyes, we'd see them through God's? Or the things that we hear that we really heard was the voice of God? And that's not something he's talking about way down the road. That's something God's calling us to now. Hear these words from Paul in Romans chapter 15. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to praise, bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy as it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. Again it says, rejoice O Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord all you Gentiles and sing praises to him all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. His summons on our lives to encourage one another with a spirit of unity. Wow, how do we really do that? Well, rather than just worrying about how to do it, please note the urgency that Matthew gives us. Please rise. This is Matthew chapter 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. 
The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear this threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Man. You know, I know many of us here have been baptized with water. How many have really experienced what it means to be baptized with fire? Let's talk to God. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, when John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness, he proclaimed, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We humbly ask, O Lord, that you would work repentance in our hearts today with sorrow over our sin. We ask that you grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may turn from the sin that hindered us from living our lives according to your good and gracious will. Our world is a mess. There are wars and rebellions, fighting and divisions. Our lives are broken. We have strained relationships even among our families. We're not encouraging each other. We talk of peace, but live in peace us. We ask for your holy protection from the enemy. We need your forgiveness, your love, your light.
seeing through God's eyes, hearing through God's ears. The words Paul wrote in Rome, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit that reminds each and every one of us of our baptism and that by grace through faith alone, all of our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. He made a way for us because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And it's not something he's yet to do because on the cross, remember he said those words, it is, it's all taken care of. So he's taking care of it. Now he calls to you and I and he says, are you ready? Not ready for Christmas, but ready to, to live the life that he's called us to. Ready. You know, I, I 
hear this section of Isaiah, and it really struck me this year. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion, the yearling together. A little child will lead them. Even more, the cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, the lion will eat straw like the ox. Infant plays near the hole of the cobra, even putting his hand in the viper's nest. Really? Is that possible? Yes, because this is his word, not mine. He's calling us to a life of encouragement, of working together in unity. Can you imagine that in this life? Yeah, in this life, as we encourage one another to be ready. You know, I, I hear all these analogies that, that Bob read, and I just repeated to you, and, and I, my head took me immediately to an image. You know the story to this one? This guy raised this lioness from a cub. And as it got older, everybody around was saying, oh, you can't keep that animal, it's too dangerous. So they made him give it up. Years passed, and he went to the, the place where the lion was kept. And when she saw him, that was their embrace. Oh, yeah, look at the mouth. Could have been a different story, right? But this wasn't something that just happened overnight. This was his life. This was her life. And what I love about that picture is what you see the lioness's face. Can you imagine the lion lying down with the lamb? Can you imagine the peace and the joy that, that God has already bestowed on us? Are you ready to let it really take place? You heard these readings. Here's Isaiah. They will not hurt or destroy in my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, and the waters cover the sea. No more destruction, no more problems, no more. When we get ready, because we don't know what each day is going to bring, do we? You know, I'm looking at, at, at you and realizing, you know, I'm supposed to be standing out there, right? I woke up this morning, and the world was spinning, and I said, I'm going to stay back here and have something to hold on to. Ready for what life brings. What do you do with it? Do you celebrate it or do you just endure it? That's why when we look at Paul, he wrote these words, for whatever was written in the early days was written for our... Anybody know what that word means? It means you read it, you learn it, and you make it what you are. So that through perseverance and all that, that's through, through living a life that's filled with an excitement. I, I don't know about you, but I don't like to persevere. I like to celebrate. And that's how God is calling us to persevere. Live a life filled with the excitement of what's gonna happen next. Because you know who's in charge? It's not me, not you, it's him. So as we look to this excitement, we have the opportunity to do the next thing. Encourage one another. That happens all the time, right? Catch this next part. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to hear this several times today, and I want it to really ring in your ears. John the baptizer said, I baptize you with water for repentance. But the guy that's coming after me, he's not going to do it with water. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with
encourage one another with these words. You know, it's beautiful to me to, to go back into some of the original language because the word for encourager is paraklesis. And I know that just, wow, I, light bulbs just went off. Paraklesis is the word for Holy Spirit, the paraclete. When Jesus, with the resurrection, the ascension, he said, it's good for you that you don't see me all the time anymore because as I go, I will send you the paraclete, the comforter, the encourager, the motivator, who when you hear those words of the Lord, you get inspired, right? Are you ready? Are you ready? You know, I, I was looking for an illustration for this text, and I told you a couple weeks ago I was in Houston, and, and man, the speakers there were just, wow. One of the speakers was this guy. His speech, more than an hour long, man, it was just it was so powerful. He says, from early on in my life, God put a voice in my head a voice of encouragement. He said, as I grew, every time I'd get frustrated, that voice would just ring in my head again, and, and it, it just, it wouldn't go away. He said, I, I was really a pretty bad student. He said, when, I, when I'd go to school, I, I, I had this habit of not studying for tests. Anybody know anybody like that? He said, one day, there was this real hard test. And as I sat in there looking at the test, my eyes kept wanting to go. And this voice in my head said, Danny, Danny, God loves you. You're a child of God. Danny, you know what to do. God's got this. Work with me. He said, I wish I could tell you I passed that test, but I didn't. But he said that was a pattern that just kept going on and on in my life. He said, one of the things God gave me was, was the uh, ability to be a good athlete. This is Danny. I don't, I, maybe you don't recognize him. I'm going to take you back a few years. Danny Werfel, Heisman Trophy winner in 1996. He says, all through my career, God kept speaking to me, this voice, this voice that kept inspiring me and motivating me. And, well, if you win the Heisman Trophy, you're going to play pro football, right? So what team do you think Danny Warfel played for? Could it be any other? He played for the Saints. <laughs> Enough of that. Um, Danny, in football... Uh, had one of the, it's said to be one of the most used photographs of professional football. I had never seen it before, but here it is. He said that event changed his life. Do you notice anything strange about this helmet? He had gotten hit, and he said everything went black. I couldn't see anything. He didn't know his helmet had been turned around. He says, when I got up off the ground, I just stood there and I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. But that voice was there. Danny, I got you. You're my child. I love you. Well, Danny's story went on and on. And it's a powerful story. He talks about the fact that every time he would go to practice, he would go play past the place that said desire. And every time he, he came to that corner, he had to choose which direction to go. You see how bad those homes are in New Orleans? And he'd go to practice. And then one day, that voice spoke to him again. It said, Danny, I've got so much more I want you to do. I've got you, Danny. Get ready for the future. And he went down the other road. 
There's an organization, and that's one of their, their cards, Desire Street Ministries, the intersection of lives, leaders, and neighbors. More of their literature is this, Desire Street Ministries, turning barriers into bridges, working with the homeless, the addicts, working with people that are in desperate need. Danny quit playing football and became the CEO of this organization. End of story? No. Danny developed a disease that paralyzed him. He couldn't move. That voice of God never went away. Danny, you're mine. I got you. Danny, I'll take care of you. Get ready and work with me. As I said, he was the speaker. He wasn't with a walker. He, God had healed him. It's not the end of the story. He said, one day, I had one of those horrible, horrible days at work. Anybody ever have one of those? He said, I got home and I was just empty. My mom was there that day. We had just had a son. And when I walked in the door, I heard my mom. She said, Danny, I've got you. You're a child of God. I'll take care of you. His mom was holding his son, speaking to her, speaking to him. That voice that he had heard all those days growing up was her voice of encouragement. His son's name, Danny. What voice is going on in your head right now? What are you hearing? He reminded us and he said in his word today to have the eyes of the Lord, to have the ears that we hear his voice. Out of his love, he has called us by name. He baptized us and made us his own. And John said, the one who's baptizing you now didn't use water. He's using the Holy Spirit and fire. It's time to get excited, not about Christmas, about our Lord. Let's celebrate him to the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise. May God's peace, which really does surpass all understanding, keep your hearts, your minds, your lives celebrating the fire of our Lord. Amen. Let's join together in proclaiming who he is. These are the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again for the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we make offering to our Lord. It's only 17 days until Christmas, so buckle up. It's going to be the busiest 17 days of the year. Our children's Christmas Eve service is one of the highlights of the year, but it wouldn't happen without the hard work of our amazing kids. Our first rehearsal is this afternoon from 1 to 3 p.m. in the Worship Center. Today's rehearsal is for those in 4th through 8th grades. This Wednesday evening, the senior youth and their parents will be serving my favorite meal, soups and more, from 5.30 to 6.15 p.m., our Wednesday evening ministries are from 6.30 to 7.05. And then we'll all gather in the worship center from 7.15 to 7.45 as we talk about reflecting light. 
This Saturday, you could stay busy the whole day if you wanted to. The Holiday Shopping Expo will be held from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Multipurpose Room, so stop by for some Christmas shopping. Do you love fresh baked baklava? You do? Then you need to join Maggie Newton in the kitchen for Cooking with Nuts from 1 to 4 p.m. Check out page 3 of the Great Pages for a list of ingredients you'll need to bring. After that, you'll want to meet in the Fellowship Hall at 4 p.m. to hop on the party bus as we head to some of our local care homes to go Christmas caroling. We'll be back at the church by 6.15 to have pizza for dinner. Next Sunday, the 15th, is the next Children's Christmas Eve rehearsal. It's still from 1 to 3 p.m. in the Worship Center, but this time, everyone in grades K through 8 needs to be there. Remember the angel tree in the gathering place? All those gifts you bought for members of our church and the community need to be dropped off in the church office by next Wednesday, the 18th. If you have any questions about the angel tree, talk to Lori Casey. Also on the 18th, it's our last Wednesday evening of the year. Same schedule as last week. The junior youth and their parents will be serving up tacos and more. And our worship service that evening will be all about healing light. Sunday the 22nd is another rehearsal. Kids in pre-K and a parent will rehearse in the worship center from 1 to 1.30 p.m. And everyone in grades K through 8 will rehearse from 1 to 3 p.m. The next day, on Monday the 23rd, is the last rehearsal before Christmas Eve. Kids in grades K through 8 will rehearse in the worship center from 6.30 to 8 p.m. On Christmas Eve, we'll have two services here in the worship center. The children's Christmas Eve service is at 6 p.m., and our candlelight service with Holy Communion is at 8 p.m. Be sure and come back on Christmas Day as we continue our celebration of our Savior's birth with worship and Holy Communion at 10 a.m. There will be no Wednesday evening activities on Christmas Day or the following Wednesday, New Year's Day. Our regular Wednesday evening schedule will resume on January 8th. Don't worry about remembering everything in this video. Everything I mentioned and more can be found in those legendary gray pages. So invite your friends, family, and neighbors to be a part of all the awesome things God is doing here at Risen Savior. A lot of opportunities to grow in our Lord, to serve Him, and to remind ourselves and others of what it means to encourage one another. Life doesn't always bring about the things that we want or that we desire. Uh, we pray especially today for Cindy Melzer as she continues uh, radiation treatments for cancer. Doa Friedrichsen continues to recover from a fall he had this last week. And uh, Dave and Irene Majors, we pray for them. Um, they buried their son this week. It's Advent season. Our world is filled with joy and happiness and nothing else. Now, we pray for our, our world. And St. Andrew Lutheran Church, we celebrate with them. They are receiving a pastor. Let's rise as we speak to our Lord. Heavenly Father, this is a day that you have given to us. So as we pause to reflect and, and, and see all the encouraging things that are happening, give us those eyes that we truly do see through you. Give us those ears that we really do hear, not the message of evil and what's wrong, but to hear the beauty of your word as it teaches and as it encourages us of what you have already done for us. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, these, these bodies that we have fail us from time to time, whether it be the world, the devil, or our own sinful flesh. So today, we ask your continued hand of blessing. Be with Cindy, be with Doyle, and be with Dave and Irene as, as they look at a new life that you have granted to Mark. Father, this world is filled with so much trial and travail. But let it again remind us that you have overcome the world and you've called us to live the lives of victory. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we celebrate with St. Andrew. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Pastor Belke to them. And as they prepare in these next couple months to get everything ready, let the joy ring loud and clear to the glory of your Son. We ask this knowing that you've already granted so many blessings to us. So let us now commend all that we pray for into your loving arms as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so we have the privilege of getting out into the world and being encouragers. As we go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor as we go in his peace. Again, good morning. As you look through and as you heard all the announcement, many things are happening, many ways to grow and serve our Lord. One of those begins now. Let's greet one another.